Hi there, um, while I go I picked up this uh, AIM TTI iProber um, PCB Current Probe um, I did start shooting a review of it but I lost quite a lot of the footage and I just noticed that um, Dave Jones at EV Blog is getting one so I'll let him do a proper review and maybe if he misses anything just cover a few points but I, did, I do still have all the uh, teardown footage so I'm just going to show you that um, so you can see what's inside it for the moment because I just can't be bothered to reshoot all the, re all the review stuff at the moment I just don't have time um, it's a fairly new um, instrument and very unusual and it's the, I believe it's about the first of its kind that can directly measure the current inside a PCB track. Um, conventional current pro magnetic current probes tend to have to pass the wire through a small loop um, to pick up the current. This works by sensing the magnetic field. The way this works, what they've managed to do is produce a very small flux gate magnetometer. Now, flux gate magnetometers are quite old technology. They've been around for a long time. They were commonly used in things like electronic compasses, and I've seen a, a Radio Shack car compass from about 20 years ago that used one. Um, it's actually quite a simple principle. Um, any magnetic material uh, can only be magnetized a certain amount. So the more um, field you give it, it will, it will magnetize up to a certain point, but then it will saturate. And what the flux gate magnetometer does, it takes a material which is um, the composition of which means it's got a fairly low saturation point. It's got a coil wound around it uh, which magnetizes it alternately in one direction then the other. And the magnetic field is designed such that it drives the coil into saturation in both directions. Um, now, in the absence of any external field, this means that it will saturate at the same point in both directions. But when you then get an external magnetic field, this will bias the saturation point, and you can then detect this to produce the to detect and measure the um, amount of magnetic field. And it is you know, potentially a very sensitive um, solution if it's implemented properly. So what they've done here is they've managed to do a very small one, which has two uh, advantages. One is um, that you can get close enough to a PCB track to measure the magnetic magnetic field primarily from the PCB track and not adjacent tracks but secondly the small one also means that um, they can drive at a high frequency they drive this at about 40 megahertz which means it has a bandwidth I think it's about 5 megahertz um, measurement bandwidth nowadays um, a lot of applications that used to use flux gate magnetometers particularly compasses have been replaced by semiconductor sensors using giant magnetoresistive effects um, but this, um, I'm guessing, I don't know. I don't really know enough about it to know what the which which solution has the, the best ultimate sensitivity. Um, so I was a little bit surprised these magnetometers are here rather than a GMR sensor. But it may be that they could just get the size and performance better using, using this technology. Right. I think we need to take a look inside this. Um, the probe head is quite a nice moulded plastic assembly, um, held together with four Torx screws. So this opens up most of it's in a shielded can. I'll have a look inside that in a moment. Um, one nice thing is the um, the external case is separate from the probe itself, so it's conceivable if you're sort of scraping this around PCBs, it might hit a hot component and get damaged. Um, the only thing that gets damaged is this plastic casing, so I, I would imagine you could um, you'd be able to get this as a spare part. So if you did damage that, um, you're not just damaging the presumably quite expensive um, probe itself. Um, probes in a sort of look like it's moulded into a brass tube, soldered into this uh, shielded can. There's a big ferrite core there um, to avoid any common mode noise issues down the cable. Okay, so quite a lot of components in here and quite a lot of adjustment. Um, quite lots of its discrete components. So what's basically going to be in here is going to be the 40 megahertz driver to actually drive the center itself, plus demodulation decoding components. Little test label on there. Nothing under there. Just a few capacitors and a couple of op amps. Nothing particularly exciting. Um, looks like the PCB dip it disappears down. The PCB vanishes down the end of the tube there. 
this looks fairly glued together so I don't think I'm going to go any further into this. Actually the probe does slide out of the tube quite easily so this is what we've got here. Just a few more discrete components, nothing too exciting and it looks like three connections into the actual sense head in here and this is all potted, moulded. Let's take a look inside the box. Okay, so um, quite a lot in here. Um, so there's a shield, another shielded area here. Um, there's an area here which looks like it's meant it's, there's provision for a shield on the PCB that they didn't fit. Um, this is obviously a power supply area. You've got um, some inductors here. What looks like uh, probably a multi-output switch mode supply here. That's a uh, LM LM5000 uh, switch mode supply controller. Some more op-amp type stuff by the looks of it. Um, yeah, this is actually all the calibrators. Here's the calibrator for the um, calibrated track. There's a little bit of PCB on here, which is just providing an alignment hole for the, the PCB track underneath. Um, looks like there's a test point here. They've got a big blob of solder, which is in series with the um, calibration track. Um, that's probably also um, a low voltage switch mode regulator to produce, to produce a high current in the track at a low voltage. And, there, and then there's all the analog stuff which is uh, coming under here, so let's take a look under here. Um, nothing particularly exciting here, just a few op amps and analog stuff. This side, all we've got here is the switches, this power supply, inductor, and that's that's about it really. Nothing, nothing too exciting. Right, so a quick play with this. Um, first thing I'm going to try is this. This is a 32 by 32 um, LED matrix display. So there's sort of nice high currents. The, um, the peak current is about 20 amps per row on this. Uh, what we've got on the back here, there's a board. There's, um, there's a switch mode power supply converting 24 volts down to about 4 volts for the LEDs and up to about 20 amps. There's also some control circuitry and a few other bits and pieces. And then on this side we've got um, column drivers. The whole board is arranged as a, uh, a, a four uh, divided by four multiplex. So there's a four phase multiplex and each of these column drivers drives 16 sets of columns and each column is four LEDs. So we should have, a quick, we should have some nice easy to see um, currents floating around. So I'll have a little probe around and see what we can see. Right, from the control board we've got four anode lines that actually run up these fat tracks here, these then get distributed along each row of the board, so we'll have a probe around those to see what we can see. Should be some nice, obvious, easy to understand waveforms. So if we start the probe here, you can, also you can see you can see both the um, the row waveforms as one in four multiplex on the row, but also you can see the finer detail, which is the actual pulse width modulation to actually, for the intensity of each LED. Should I zoom in on that? So that's the actual PWM waveform for the LEDs, which are running at about 25% brightness. Um, as I move across here, you can see, let's get the trigger a bit better. You can actually see some influence from the adjacent tracks as I move it towards the track. You can start seeing the adjacent tracks having an effect. And then it then moves to the next one. And now as I move up here you'll see the current reduce. Reduce the sensitivity a bit. Um, as we move up, 
as we pass each branch we see the current drop as it's then being distributed across as you move up there it drops then we get another drop then another drop there so we've got a nice easy clear current waveform there to see another interesting application of this probe is to actually look at the current the current density and current paths through large ground planes what i've got here i've got a pcb um which i'm part putting about a one amp pulsed signal in, so it's coming from there, going through this ground plane and exiting here. Um, just to make it easier to display, I've actually connected this uh, probe up to an audio amplifier, just so you can basically convert the current into volume. So if I start here, you can hear the, the, con the current is, is contrasted where the plane next down here, the, you obviously get a higher current density. As you move further out, you can see it's a lot more consistent over here. The current's flowing, the level isn't varying that much. But obviously as we get close to these breaks, there's no current flowing here. Similarly here, we get towards this hole and the current dies out because the current's flowing around the outside. Um, we've got another place here where it gets thin, so again we've got a fairly even current distribution here. But as we get closer to this neck, here it gets a lot louder, so we've got our peak current density is here. And again there's not much current flowing up here because this part of the plane doesn't really go anywhere. We've got a fairly, fairly consistent current over this part here. Now we've got because there are exits there, but we've got a break here, we've got two current paths going around here, so we've got some current up here, and some down here, until we actually get to the point where it's kind of flying out of the board. I thought it might be interesting to see if it was possible to use this probe to produce a 2D visualisation of current flow in um, ground planes. Now the, the obvious way would be to hook this up to a plotter and sort of move it over a precise trajectory, log all the data and so on, which will probably work quite nicely, but I thought let's do something a bit simpler. All I've done is I've put a little white lead on the end, um, it's just run through a simple amplifier circuit from the output. So the brightness of the lead depends on the current density of the probe and then just take some, wave it around the board and take some long exposure photos and see how it comes out. 